time. She never lied. <laughs> like speaking to small groups because I feel like, and most importantly, to my own family because they know too much about me. <laughs> it's much easier on a stage with a huge audience that I can't even see their eyes because then I can have better control than I can over people that know me so well. But, I don't have anything special to say except my new son-in-law thought we should bring the trophy. They haven't been out of the house in an awful long time. But uh, if anybody else had asked me, we probably wouldn't have brought it. But he said, I promise I'll take care of it and I'll be in charge. Well, he's in charge of my daughter. I let him do that. So it's only natural. I let him take care of my trophy. Um, I can't say that this was not, I don't mean to diminish the importance of this because an honor like this is something that uh, I have always appreciated and I know in some ways why it happened, but I'm still in awe that it happened to me. Um, as you know, I grew up right here in this neighborhood, was born right across the hill here. And when I started being in pageants, it wasn't because I was beautiful. I was not. I might have been a cute kid, but I was not beautiful. But I began in this church. This is where... I joined the church and I accepted the Lord full wholeheartedly. And it was by grace, that's all I can say, because all the way along my life there were things that led me to the next thing and to the next thing. And the part that was important to me was all I had to do was the best I could. And I felt like at one time, if I just knew what I'm supposed to do, I can do that. And it's only by the grace of God that I chose to want to do the best I could. That was not my doing, because that was a desire that the Lord put there. But I was first selected to represent, to represent this church to young people's conferences in the summer and leadership schools. And that's why I would be there. And the same thing happened as I moved along. I wish we had more young people here today so I could tell you. You just do the very best you can, and um, the things, the doors will open up for you. But in representing my college when I went to Lander, I was chosen to be Miss Lander, and I was pleased because I had gone to other campuses when I was not proud of the way my fellow uh, classmates would behave once they left. And I think we, we know about this even when people go to other countries. Sometimes the Americans are the ones that misbehave the most. But we have a responsibility. When I left my home as a child to go to school, my mother said, today you're representing the family. People may not know your dad, but they may ask who your father is. They won't know anything bad about your dad because there's nothing bad about him. But as I came along in, in the country and joined the 4-H club and did what I could because dad liked me to do that, I uh, learned to show the cows. And it was kind of fun when you finally win a blue ribbon, but it took a lot of work. I thought first of all, I could put a little nail polish 
clear polish on their horns, well, I found out that didn't work. It was another little girl who didn't mind getting down and dirty and really getting the cows cleaned up. So I thought, when I want to be outdone, I can do that. So I did, and uh, learned how to, to uh, present my um, livestock in the best way, because Daddy had really done the work. I mean, he was a Guernsey breeder. But um, I liked winning first place, and I liked winning grand champions. But as I was selected to represent, whether I was representing this church or representing my school or representing my college, uh, I did it the best I could. And, and Dr. Greer, uh, who was president of my college in Greenwood, understood me. Uh, we had a philosophy, you do the best you can, and if God wants you to do that, he'll do the rest. And I became a believer because that's exactly what happened. When I was uh, Myrtle Beach, chosen to be Miss South Carolina, then uh, the following year, I crowned the new winner and the the JCs from Greenwood came over here to ask me if I would enter another state pageant to go to the Miss USA pageant. And I had to think long and hard about that because uh, I'd already won one and it was a great year and I was a little bit tired, but I thought, well, why not? I've never been to California and that's where that would be and it'd be a nice experience. And you learn not everybody can be a winner, but you can get something from the experiences. So, I said I would enter another state pageant, and I did. And fortunately, I won. And the next thing I knew, like the next week, I was off to California. No one went with me. Uh, you know, South Carolina and the groups didn't have a lot of money to be uh, passing out, and there was nobody to go with me, so I packed my bag and went. But, um... <clears throat> When I arrived, for some reason there was a mix up and no one met me. And I realized after quite a few years it was probably my era and not the airline's era that when I, when I arrived no one met me so I called the pageant office and they said, well someone is coming in about an hour and you get with the bond halls and they will bring you out here. So uh, that's what I did and I gave Mr. Bond Hall my uh, passed my tickets for my luggage and he came back to the car with the, without the luggage and said there was none there. So that was kind of a, a downer. It was about 11 o'clock by then and I hadn't had any supper because it was scary. You know, we didn't travel now then in flip-flops and so forth. <laughs> I, was, I was in high heels and uh, my luggage and my evening gowns on my arm to, to carry, so I didn't have any luggage with me. So uh, I tell you this because there's something about us that runs in this family. We a little bit scrappy. We're not going to give up. We're going to work it out. So I decided, well, just keep my mouth shut. They don't know I don't have my clothes with me all those things I had worked hard to make, but I could repress that dress and put it back on. Those judges had to look at all those girls. They were not gonna remember what I had on yesterday, and they didn't. So one day I'd wear the hat with it, and one day I'd wear a little duster with it, and I was doing fine. But um, that became unimportant. I didn't have to worry about what I was wearing tomorrow, and you what I was wearing. <laughs> <laughs> the evening gowns were on my arm, so that was fine with that. And they gave us a swimsuit because the pageant was sponsored by Catalina Swimsuit Company and Universal Pictures. So I had the, what I needed for the actual pageant. So it worked out fine. And the night of the Miss USA pageant, I couldn't believe that I had won. Uh, but it happened. Dr. Greer, who I spoke of earlier at Lander, had called his um, 
what is he? He was a photographer for Lander and he was the promoter. That, uh, and he called Tom Hutto and he said, Tom, um, Meriden's going to win that pageant in the morning, so you gather up all the material you have on her because you're going to need it tomorrow. And Tom said, oh, Dr. Glare, he's this pie in the sky. It's not going to happen. She's from Lander College in South Carolina. He didn't realize she's got the whole um, United States to compete with. So anyway, next morning, uh, sure enough, uh, Dr. Greer called him and said, you got everything I told you, Tom. <laughs> so that was fine. But the sad thing about that little part was <coughs> Leopard had had a thunderstorm that night and um, naturally didn't have any phones, even though so, uh, we had, we had gone with everybody, party line phones, but they didn't even have that. So somebody <laughs> heard it on the radio and went to mother and dad's at breakfast time to tell them that daughter was named as USA. So anyway, that was, that was fun. And uh, the following week I was moved on to the Miss Uni Universe pageant uh, as Miss United States of America. And that, that was, uh, that was fun, and I enjoyed meeting all the girls, and we, we had a good time. They took us out to Universal Pictures, and one, there's a picture here somewhere with um, <clears throat> Jeff Chandler. There it is. Anyway, met a lot of the stars. But um, time went on, and, and anyway, I had the good fortune of winning that one too, so. When I got back to my room that night, there was my luggage. <laughs> so I was grateful, and I had clean clothes all packed, because I was going to be out there for a while after that. But the pageant was sponsored, as I said, by Catalina Swimsuit Company and by Universal Pictures. Uh, Universal Pictures was giving a $200 a week uh, contract to the winner of the USB pageant, a $250 a week uh, to, to the Miss Universe winner. Well, unfortunately, I didn't get both of them, but um, I got the $250 a week, and I did sign the contract. Cause it was a seven-year contract with Universal. And I was given, uh, Roy Rogers presented me the keys to the convertible. Miss USA won a convertible, and so did Miss Universe. Well, I couldn't drive two, so I gave one to the runner-up of the Miss Universe pageant, uh, who was Martha Rocha Brazil. She was very popular, and I will tell you, she was beautiful. I saw the first day I arrived, and I thought, Wow, I'm not sure I should be here. <laughs> she was really pretty lady. But uh, for some reason, they liked me. And it was, it all worked well. But thank you. I, as you know, I didn't choose to stay. I stayed out there through the summer and in September and I could hear the school bell ring. I thought, well, I'll have only one more year to finish what I started. So I've gone home and uh, graduated with my class this year. So that's what I did, but I had wonderful opportunities. I was the only Miss USA to serve as the Miss USA and the Miss Universe because after that we have had five Miss Universe girls win and they always had the runner-up be, but I had the privilege of, of serving both capacities and it was a lot of fun. One of the highlights was the Rose Parade, <clears throat> which I rode in, and we had sleet and ice, and <laughs> it was <clears throat> a different year, and people still speak of it, 1954. That's the kind of Rose Parade they had, but it was, it was a lot of fun to be able to represent them, and it was really a privilege to represent you all, and I still think of myself more as a representative that a beauty queen. So I hope that uh, if you all ever have questions, you'll let me know. And thank you for letting me share so much time.
Yes, so nice.